Today, we're gonna talk about one of the best opportunities in markets that retail traders are totally sleeping on. I'm talking about the micro treasury yield futures at the CME. Now I know what you're thinking, Aren't treasuries boring and complicated? Well, that certainly hasn't been the case lately. Interest in central bank policy is at an all-time high, and with central banks stuck between out-of-control inflation and a possible recession, the treasury market has been yielding plenty of trading opportunities. You like my puns? They're, they're thick puns. Anyways, it seems like everyone has an opinion on interest rate policy these days. Why not put your money where your mouth is and trade your ideas. So let's talk about five reasons to trade micro treasury yield futures. And by the way, if I could ask you to just hit that like button, I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel out. And reason number one is limited risk. Micro treasury yield futures are perfectly priced for small accounts. The minimum tick size is a thousandth of a percent. So yields are often quoted in basis points, which is a hundredth of a percent. So this is a tenth of that. In other words, a change of 0 0.001 is worth $1 per contract on the micro treasury yield futures. Your average move is gonna be worth about 10 to $20 per contract with the largest moves being worth up to $200 per contract. And this really gives you room to set your risk on your own terms. To day trade, you only need $50 in margin and holding overnight only requires $264 in margin, which means that even small accounts can afford to swing trade in the micro yield futures. And of course, they're futures, so you don't have to worry about pattern day trading rules or any of that nonsense. Now, the one downside of this is that your tick to commission ratio isn't very good. In other words, how much you make per tick compared to what your commission per trade is. Round turn commissions are the same as a tick, so about $1 per trade, and that's gonna be a greater percentage of your profits compared to some other instruments. However, I would argue that if you're not profitable, the commissions probably aren't what's killing you. Rating is hard and it takes years of dedicated effort to become successful. So for the unprofitable trader, what really matters is the burn rate. How long can you keep going before you run out of money to trade? Micro yield futures minimize that burn rate, giving you more opportunities to learn and figure it out. And if you do figure things out, you can just graduate to the normal treasury futures where the tick to commission ratio is as favorable as it gets. The full sized futures are a little different as they trade in terms of price instead of yield, meaning that they'll move opposite to the micro yield futures. Quotes are also given in fractions, which is a little weird at first, but you'll quickly get used to it. So ZB, the 30 year, for instance, is priced in 30 seconds. So it will go 30, 31, and then it will go back to zero, which we call evens. And then that's the next point. The 10 year is priced in halves of that. So halves of 30 seconds. So they'll go 31, 31 half, evens. The five year is in quarters. So 31, 31 quarter, 31 half, 31 and three quarters, which I hate saying. So I usually say 31 packs. You get it? Because three fourths of a pie chart looks like a Pac-Man. It's never going to catch on, is it? Anyways, the point is it might seem alien, but it's actually quite simple once you get used to it. And that brings us to point number two. Treasuries are one of the best ways to learn the markets. In fact, that's how many professional desks start their new traders at. It's a common misconception that treasuries are too complicated, but really it's just that they're different. Being priced in fractions being a great example, and you'll see this sort of thing all over the place in the bond world. They just do it differently, almost as if it was done on purpose to dissuade less inquisitive minds from trying it out. Don't get me wrong, the fixed income market can be incredibly sophisticated, but in many respects, trading benchmark rates like we're going to do is more simple than trading stocks. Stocks seem easy to relate to at first because everyone has worked for a company before and that makes sense. But debt is really not that complicated, guys. Investors purchase debt and receive a certain amount of interest and return. That's all there is to it. So instead of having to worry about all the peculiarities of a specific company and the industry that they're in, we can just focus on the economy 
as a whole, what does the growth look like? What is the jobs outlook? What is the Federal Reserve doing? Basic economics. And those things are going to apply no matter what asset you're trading. So you can learn these subjects in detail from the treasury market, and that will help you if you ever switch over to other markets. Treasuries are also very effective at teaching you good habits. Some of these other markets will lie to you. Oil in particular is notorious for this. There's lots of movement and it's easy to get sucked into putting on too many trades all the time. You can get away with that for quite some time too. The market will build you up just enough to make you overconfident before exploiting your hubris in one fell swoop. You end up right where you started, only now you have all sorts of bad habits reinforced by random reward. Overtrading is with out question the most common trader problem and starting with treasuries can really help you avoid that problem. There's not nearly as much random movement in the treasury market. They are consistent, steady, and intentional. Trading them requires patience, which is one of the most difficult things for traders to learn. When you make a mistake, you'll find out pretty quickly and it's a lot easier to figure out why you were wrong. The next reason we're on what three is that the treasury market presents good trading opportunities for small retail traders. I have found that many futures traders are often attracted to their instrument of choice for the wrong reasons. For instance, they'll look for the instrument that moves the most, which basically means they'll trade NQ, but we don't call NQ the widow maker for nothing. High intraday volatility works both ways in the instruments that have the greatest one day gains potential also have the highest one day losses potential. Instead, I would pick an instrument based on your ability to develop an edge in that market. Remember from our inelastic markets hypothesis video that it's really the orders that move markets. Profitable intraday trading requires that we predict those future orders. So really what we're looking for is predictors of order flow to base our trading on. And the treasury market is full of such opportunities. For instance, Treasuries are very sensitive to news and changes in economic conditions. Such changes in expectations can generate persistent flows as large institutions chase the move. And these are the perfect opportunities for small nimble traders to get in ahead of the move. Some of the best opportunities can come off of big economic number releases, releases that happen at 8.30 Eastern time when the treasury market is already in full swing, but equities haven't even gotten started, which makes them perfect to try and trade these big macroeconomic events. There can also be opportunities to predict future flows by looking for hedging and rebalancing activity from large institutions. The treasury market is one of the largest and most liquid markets in the world and research shows that such large instruments tend to have more predictive signals perhaps because of that regular institutional activity so end of month rebalancing options activity and futures rollovers can all create large flows worth trading but i think one of the biggest advantage of treasuries is their role as a flight to safety asset. This is why I feel that even if you regularly trade something else, it's good to have that treasury experience in your back pocket. See, when we're in a bull market, trading will seem easy. It's like everybody's making money and all you have to do is buy into the trend. Bear markets are so much more difficult to trade. It's not so bad if you get short right at the very beginning and just hold it. Otherwise, it can be a complete nightmare trying to trade a bear market. Bear markets are incredibly volatile and will shake you out of positions. Take for instance the Korean crypto startup Uprise who lost 20 million dollars of client cash in the Luna crash despite being short because they stopped out of good trades. Investors are more stingy when exiting a market and that makes it difficult to pull profits out from short-term trading. But if you are long treasuries, during such volatility, life can be so much easier. Flight to safety flows in the treasuries can create some of the strongest and most consistent trends you will ever see. You can kick back and relax while all the equity traders are running around with their heads on fire. And of course, last but not least, it's fun. This market never ceases to entertain me with every twist and turn, and I would continue to follow it religiously even if there was no way that I could make money on it. Sure, there can be slow days where the market 
market isn't moving much, but we never run out of things to talk about during my morning live streams. It really is true what they say about fixed income having some of the smartest traders, both collaborating with and competing against such intelligent people is truly a rewarding experience. Of course, stocks will always get the most attention, but the smart money knows that the treasuries are really the main event. And by the way, if you made it this far, make sure you give me a like and leave a comment below. I know that there are a lot of you that really love the interest rate and treasury market as well. So let me know what your experience is and give some of those new traders some advice. Now, I'm not just going to throw you to the wolves here and I have a number of videos in the works to help you understand what moves the treasury markets. In the meantime though, I have a few tools that will really help you if you're thinking about trading the treasury market. For starters, if you're a Ninja Trader user, you should definitely check out my indicator package over at speculatorseth.com. It includes a few tools that are particularly useful for treasuries and it's only $100 for a lifetime license. The spread indicator in particular is a tool that I cannot trade without. Understanding whether the yield curve is steepening or flattening during a move is critical to understanding the order flow in treasuries. Next, we have the tools on the CME website. There are two in particular that I would check out. The first is the FedWatch tool. This uses the short-term interest rates from bills and swaps to show what the market is predicting the Fed will use for the federal funds rate. The estimates are quoted in a range, but just think of things as always being at the lower end end of the range. So for instance, during the 2020 crash, interest rates were brought down to zero. Then in March of 2022, they raised rates 50 basis points, putting the rate at 0.5 to 0.75, but really everybody just says it as the interest rate is 0.5. The federal funds rate affects all the other rates down the yield curve, so it's an important tool to check regularly. The CME also has the Treasury Watch tool, and this connects what is being traded in the futures market to the actual cash bond market. So this is where you'll find all the fun wonk stuff like QSIP numbers, the dollar value of a basis point, which bond is the cheapest to deliver, and a whole bunch of other useful metrics. The CME has a bunch of free educational webinars about what all that stuff means, so I won't bore you with it here. Just know that at some point you might want to run some numbers and the treasury watch tool is one of the first places to look. Next is treasurydirect.gov and the key thing you want from this website is the auction schedule. This is when the treasury department will issue new treasuries to the market. In other words, that's where supply comes from. So we definitely want to keep track of that. On the website, we can see all the details about the next auction, not just the auction time, but the amount of treasuries that they'll actually be auctioning out. It's a key regular market event that many traders forget about and they can lead to really good trades. Next, I would highly recommend getting a new squawk because the treasuries are so sensitive to breaking news and economic numbers. Now, I personally use Financial Juice and I have an affiliate link in the video description below. New squawks can be quite expensive, but Financial Juice is only $70 a month and sometimes they even offer a lifetime subscription option. So I would definitely check that out. And again, it is an affiliate link. So if you use our link, it really helps the channel out. And of course, don't forget to come back to this channel because we're going to have more videos about how the Federal Reserve works and some of the key components of bond pricing so that you can understand what moves the bond market. So make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss future videos. And of course, we always discuss the current market during my morning live streams every day, starting at 8.30 Eastern time, which is when the bond pits start. So I'll see you guys then. And in the meantime, stay profitable, friends, or at least don't lose it all, okay?